when the biggest stars show up, here's Johnny. The biggest stars show up. You can't handle the truth. On Saturday night, in front of LeJack Nicholson and many other iconic legends of the show business industry, Jamal Murray from a small town in Ontario, Canada called Kitchener, rose to the occasion better than any other player on the court. The toughness and stage presence of this man is just as, if not more special than any other player I've witnessed on such a massive stage. The receipts of brutal takes revolving around the Denver Nuggets after the first two games of this series were fairly incredible in terms of how little credit the national media gave this team. Admittedly, this was a Laker narrative that I'm responsible for setting in stone culminating in a blasphemy prediction that LA would win the title after going down 0-2. Despite being down 0-2 in the West Finals, believe me when I say this, the Los Angeles Lakers are still winning the 2023 NBA title. I do not what? love... What? I do what? not what love... What is wrong with my you? ...my point. <laughs> come on, man. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. You're making money. Come on. I mean, come on, man. While the takes I made, which I encourage you to go chuckle at in that Laker video, aged poorly, thankfully, I wasn't the only one either picking against or disrespecting the number one seeded Nuggets. Raise your hand if you all believe that the Lakers would get past the Nuggets in a seven-game series. I'm raising my hand for myself and Perk and RJ. I went into this series cautiously very optimistic. After watching game one, Here we go. my caution is gone. And my optimism is boundless. Jamal Moore Murray and Michael Porter Jr. are not good enough to be the difference. <laughs> Lakers are going to get to the Western Conference Finals and lose to Denver. Well, I mean, and sure, the Nuggets were betting favorites coming into this series, but on top of that disrespect you just saw, whether it was Bleacher Report refusing to make a single tweet about them in Game Three, then tweeting out merely "quote unquote," Denver Nuggets are a very good basketball team. Casuals still saying the Lakers have the Nuggets right where they want them, or ESPN relentlessly pushing the LA agenda on Twitter, you can see how the Nuggets became underdogs. The leadership of Jamal Murray has been both uncanny and underrated, as the Ontario native has been overwhelming for opponents in all facets. Mike Malone's done a great job at dictating the narrative as well, Opposing Murray's all-business approach with some light trash talk about the lack of credit Denver's been getting. However, this potential Nuggets dynasty in the making was fueled by a decade-long rebuild. Stay tuned to see the basis behind why Denver deserves North America's, not to mention the rest of the world's respect, by seeing how they built this winning culture naturally and over the course of a decade. Transitioning swiftly from one era to the next, all the way back in 2011, now president for my Raptors and Masai Ujiri, who was Denver's GM at the time, traded Carmelo Anthony, an eventual 10-time All-Star and scoring champion, who was the franchise player in the pre-Jokic era, to New York in exchange for Gallinari, Wilson Chandler, Timofey Mozgov, a 2014 first-round pick swap, which was ultimately traded to Orlando in the Dwight Howard trade, which netted them Andre Iguodala, in addition to 2012 and 2013 second round picks. But most prominently, the Mello trade landed Denver the option to swap first round picks with New York five years later in 2016. That 2016 pick swap turned out to be the seventh overall pick, where the Nuggets would select Jamal Murray. Having already hired Mike Malone a year before that in 2015, and having already stolen Nikola Jokic during a Taco Bell commercial with the 41st overall pick two years prior to that in 2014, the Nuggets now had the two primary faces of their organization to go along with a set-in-stone head coach to build around. Tim Connolly would take over as the main executive back in 2013 after Ujiri would leave for the Raptors, and Connolly would be promoted to team president in 2017, with Arturas Kanasovas taken over as GM. In the summer of 2018, Denver would take Michael Porter Jr. 14th overall, a player who was injured for his first college season at Missouri, but before that was the number one ranked NCAA recruit coming out of high school. Also in 2018, the Nuggets would select now Laker Jared Vanderbilt with a lucky number 41 overall pick, Vando would be traded to Minnesota two years later. But GMs questioned if MPJ's back injury would hamper his impact in the NBA. 
but the Nuggets would take the chance on such a previously hyped up prospect with great length and generally promising two-way upside. While Porter Jr. would miss the entirety of his rookie campaign with the back injury and averaged under 10 points per game in 2019-20, Michael would come into his own after the pandemic suspension in the bubble, providing 11.4 points per game, helping the Nuggets reach the conference finals. The next year in 2021, Porter would solidify his role as Denver's third option, scoring 19 points per game over 61 outings, shooting over 54% from the field and over 44% from three. The Nuggets were taking steps in the right direction. Making the conference finals was a massive accomplishment. However, rightfully the front office felt they needed more firepower up front and at the 2021 deadline, they would trade RJ Hampton, Gary Harris, and a 2025 protected first round pick in exchange for Aaron Gordon. Gordon's been a key piece to the puzzle as in these 2023 playoffs, he's contributing 12.5 points per night, highlighted by a 23-point game in the opening outing of the second round against Phoenix, in addition to a versatile mix of perimeter and interior defense that's made him the ultimate glue guy. Gordon also provided a much-needed lob threat. But speaking of glue guys, a summer before parting ways, President Tim Connolly would sign the ageless wonder Jeff Green who added another locker room voice and a valuable body on the wing. Completing this Nuggets rebuild would be the new president, Calvin Booth, who would take over a year ago at this time following Tim Connolly signing with the Timberwolves as president. Booth would first sign former Brooklyn Net Bruce Brown Jr. to a two-year $13 million deal, and then trade Monte Morris and Will Barton to Washington in exchange for Contavious Caldwell Pope and Ish Smith. Booth would also draft one of the better rookies in this year's class, stealing the high flyer out of Kansas and Christian Brown with the 21st overall pick. In terms of Bruce Brown Jr., he's been a staple in the rotation with his offensive versatility and clamping defense, while in terms of an even more impactful addition in KCP, his leadership, whether on the court slash in the huddle, bringing Mike Malone's troops together as a player coach or off of it, giving great takes in the postgame, has meant everything to the Nuggets team vibes. Here was KCP on what fuels the Nuggets as underdogs after their most recent Game 3 win to go up 3-0. Do you, do you remember if there was a point when you looked at this team and thought, this is a team that can win a championship? Uh, I, I, from training camp, you no, know, since we've been playing together uh, and just throughout the whole season, you know, we... we we're number one in the West for a reason, uh, and, I, and I believed it from the, from the jump that we can win a championship, and that was everybody's mindset. You know, we, we knew what, how we could gel together and play together. Uh, we just wanted to continue, you know, you know just play hard, you know, together, uh, and just continue to just do great. You know, we, 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 we the underdogs. You know, we, we don't get enough credit uh, for what we do. Um, and like I said, we number one in the West for a reason. And not being talked about, you know, that's, that's a lot. So we, we take that personal and we just use that energy, continue to prove everybody wrong. Only 13% of my audience is subscribed. So please do so if you enjoyed that video. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm as well. 